stop turning. We're going to start building back up. Gas gets hot and it's turning back to a gas. You can see this differential. 1520 on the cold side, 200, 250 on this. Big a differential as we can get. That's what we want to see. The overcharge it, this will cycle up to 250, but this will still be 40, 50, 60. You'll actually see that if we were to check that, what we would get is it would get super, super cold in there for four or five cycles. And then all of a sudden it would stop getting cold at all. Because what it done is it ran so hard that it froze the evaporator. If you were to look at it, it would be iced over. So now the system doesn't work because it's too cold to expand in terms of liquid and gas. It's liquid in the whole system. So the hoses here are good indicator for you. Red side showing it's too hot. The gold side show it's cross like this. And if you see it growing fur off it, that means the system is overcharged. You have too much, too much liquid. So, normal cycling. under vacuum. I don't know if you've ever seen fucking in probably in high school somebody showed you that. What we're doing is we're boiling that water under vacuum with our vacuum pump and it turns that liquid, a liquid water, to a gas and we're pulling that out with our vacuum pump. So we're effectively drying our system under vacuum. So you need to let that vacuum pump run with both valves open for like 30 minutes. Even if it's even if it's already stopped as far as it will go, you keep that vacuum running. Because any moisture that's in there, it's going to turn that and the gas is going to suck it out and it's going to dry it. Now after your 30 minutes of vacuum, you shut both of these valves, you let it sit for 15 minutes or so, 15, 20, and it should stay. It should not bleed out. If you see that it, as soon as you shut the vacuum pump, if it just goes to zero, that tells you your system's got to leak. You, you need to find that. So, my personal pet peeve, oil. 
adding tag oil. So if you look up in this system, it'll say something like, this machine takes 10 ounces of tag oil. And it does. Nine ounces go in that fucking compressor, poured in. One oh, ounce gets added into the liquid, or into the, the system. And all that one ounce does is keep the O-rings from drying out and cracking. Randy Mobile. People have a fucking hard time with tag oil because they read it and it says, I need nine ounces. So they charge the system and they pour in nine ounces of tag oil. And guess where all that fucking tag oil sits? Oh, Randy Mobile. Right in our fucking dryer. It comes apart when it gets soaked full of shit. And now all that shit's in the whole system. My rule of thumb is this. If you change the fucking compressor, you need to make sure it's got a tag oil. There's a small uh, hole in the side. You take out, fill that bastard with tag oil. Put that plug in. If you're charging a system that's been running, don't add a fucking drop of oil. Don't add There's a nut. There's always a nut. Dye is the same way. That UV dye that we use for leak testing, three, four drops. That's it. You'll see that shit just three or four drops. Don't pour it in. I don't know how many times I've hooked up my manifolds, fire the fucking system up, and I have a tendency when I'll crack one, so I'll crack the side just to see what's in there. You can see this is full of oil. If you blow a bunch of tire, a bunch of pag oil out of here, you can only imagine how much is already sitting in there. Um, Generally, our system is so small, you can pretty much test all of the connections. I mean, they're all in the reverse flares. We don't do like a car with that special spring lock fitting. You can generally just go with a wrench and check all of ours. If it's a leak in the condenser or something, you might need dye, you know, if the cooler's damaged. Generally, I'm not huge on adding dye. Put it under vacuum, see what's going on. Uh, we have an adapter around somewhere. I have an adapter in my truck. If I'm going to replace the dryer in the system, which if I open the system, I replace the dryer because I want moisture in. So what I'll do is I'll leave the old dryer in and I have an adapter that will let me put an air hose on it. And I'll put an air hose and I'll charge it with 90 psi air. And you can just go around, touch them or if you got a bottle of soapy water or whatever, spray it. 90 psi you can generally hear it hissing if it's in a shop like this you find your leak that way once you've done that you need to change the dryer and you need to pull a vacuum on it you need to let that vacuum sit 30 minutes an hour or whatnot pull all that moisture back out of the system once it's completely emptied it do your 15 20 minute rundown do your leak test leak test passes charge your low side bottle upside down not with the bottle right side up the reason is, if you have the bottle right side up, you're actually charging with gas. So, if you put gas in the low pressure side, it's like running a hydraulic pump with no oil in it, fucking intake. So, you need that liquid to go in. So, bottle upside down, charge it, feed it in, watch your gauges rise. If we were charging this from the beginning, we'd be at vacuum. You'd start to clean up, turn the AC on full blast on high. Flip our bottle over, start charging. You would see it come up at about 20 bar, 25 psi. That compressor is going to click in. You're going to see that now the low side would start to rise. We're going to slowly be building. When you're charging from a bottle, this low side is going to be way up here because you're reading the bottle pressure. So you'll see a lot of people shake a bottle as it's charging. If it's for some reason you're in the winter time, and you're charging the system outside in the winter, you need to heat that bottle, or else it'll take fucking forever to fill that system. They make bottle heaters. I'm not gonna lie, if it's a can, I use a fucking torch. I just shake it in my hand with a torch blower. But whatever you want to do. Um, you'll see this is coming up. As this starts to rise, you see this getting to the 100, 150. Shut this off and let, see what it does to cycle. This should keep climbing, this should go down. You see this drop way down under 10, you know you need to add more. Uh, you can build it up like that. You can also have a nice scale, and we can give you an exact weight that you need to put X amount of pounds and ounces in. We don't have the scale right now. Adam's supposed to be getting a DOT bottle, a recovery bottle for our machine. If you 
you've got that, life's even easier. You take that DOT recovery bottle, you put it on your scale, you zero your scale, you recover your system, you write down what the scale added, that's how much you put back in with the new bottle. You know your weight right away. How many, does it say in the book how many pounds? Yeah. It's in the technical manual. So I'm glad that Steve said the book. The compressor wheel. The only reason I knew it was turning backwards is if you go in the service manual, it breaks down the AC system, each individual part. What it does, the, like the pressure switch, when it should open, when it should close, the weight of the system, how much pack oil should be in it. And you keep going, you go all the way to the compressor. And if you read through the compressor, the very last line said, check to make sure the compressor is turning counterclockwise when you're standing in front of the pole. So now you know you can look at it. So for here, we would be backwards. Turn the pulley, or clockwise, whatever, whichever one. Clockwise. I think it's clockwise. Clockwise, clockwise when you're standing front of it. Now we knew this was backwards. Last thing, to make it a little bit more confusing, we have this uh, fucking... Flow divider. What that flow divider there does, splits the oil coming off of this main gear pump on the diesel between the rock drill rotation, uh, the compressor, and the water pump. So we need to see a thousand RPMs minimum on the fan. So a thousand to six thousand is what it's rated for. You can photo tack it or you can even eyeball it if you want. If you, need, if you think it's turning too slow, you screw this flow divider in. It'll make this turn faster. Here's the name of the game on if you've done it right though. If you go out with whatever you, if you ever fuck with this, you follow it out to the first heading it's gonna drill in. You get a drill in a hole, you get up in there and you turn the AC on high and you flip that air conditioner on. If it's fucked up uh, and you've adjusted this too far in, as soon as you cycle that air conditioner on, the drill steel's gonna go from doing this to this. So what you do in that scenario is you come back here and you turn this out. Basically, the magic setting for this thing is when the rock drill rotation stays constant with the water pump on and the air conditioner running full blast. And making the AC run full blast is easy. So pull the fucking doors and let it run full blast. So booster pump on, drilling in the wall, cabin doors wide open, AC on high. Adjust this to when that AC compressor cycles, the rock drill rotation stays the same. Do that and life's great. The thing about the flow divider is you need to stay there and drill some holes until that hydraulic temperature gauge up there that's hard to see reads about 40 45 C. Now you know the machine is hot. So oil viscosity has a big effect on the flow divider. If the oil is cold and thick, it's going to divide harder, so it'll be more difficult to split the oil flow. Once she gets hot, the oil's gonna go past the least resistance. Which I can tell you, with that rock drill drilling in the wall, is through this air conditioner and through that water pump. So drill six, eight, ten holes with them. Make sure the rotation stays constant. If you want to see what the AC is doing, you can leave these gauges hanging whenever you want. Watch it. 250, fans come on. 175, fans shut off. Biggest differential is what you're looking for. If you overcharge too much, System won't work. You can't expand. If you undercharge, the system won't work because there's not enough to expand. So AC is a trick deal. I, if you guys ever get the chance, um, where I got my AC sir, Casey's the same way. There's a deal called Max M A C S. You see them around all the time. The class is normally like 80 bucks. You go through it's an eight-hour class. At the end of it, they hand you a certification. You can go buy R12. But they teach you everything there is to know about how to interpret these gauges. Uh, also, let me show you one thing. Hey, Brad. Operators on 